very few introductory remarks on my behalf, just to make sure that we have like the basis for this uh, discussion. We, we, we talked a lot about the uh, protection uh, gap here in Greece, the insurance protection gap we name it is the difference between the resources that you will need and the resources that you have available uh, in the event of uh, an unfortunate uh, event occurring. Uh, what does it actually mean for us, the people? Having a large protection gap indicates that we're seriously uh, underinsured. It leaves us vulnerable to the financial impact of any unfortunate event. And as uh, the president, Mr. Sergio, you mentioned in uh, his speech, Greece, in Greece there's a large uh, protection gap. Millions of Greek citizens are not adequately protected. And the focus, of course, is on natural catastrophes, health, supplementary pension, and cyber. So with those introductory remarks, I turn the discussion uh, first to uh, President Andreas uh, Branda Stetter. Thank you for taking the flight to be here with us here in Greece. Is the protection gap an issue for Greece only? or is it for other European countries that they also face it? And in which areas do you think it is most severe? Kalispera and Refaristo. My only Greek words I can spell, but thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, well, it's not a Greek phenomenon. So we have situation, as Alexandro said, in whole Europe, basically. And we have four major gaps of protection, as we heard today already in uh, the amazing contributions. It's about uh, climate change. It's about uh, pensions. It's about health and upcoming, maybe not so today in our attention as far as everything around cyber. Cyber insurance is something where I personally, having in mind what we experience currently, especially in Russia, in Ukraine, I am super concerned about this, frankly spoken. Now, what can we do? I think two topics, and we learned a lot today about this. First, um, raising the awareness, starting in school, starting in education, uh, not hiding something. And then second, not lying to people. So it's not a Greek phenom phenomenon what's going on. Uh, I have it in my country. I'm based in Vienna, so I'm Austrian. I live there. We have similar discussion around there. And I like what you said, Alexandros. People in Austria also relying on pillar one retire at the age of 60, 65, and finding out that what they have as an income then in the pension is much less than they had before. And if I talk about women especially, in my country, women retire, they have around 40% less pension on average than the men. So we have also a special gender um, uh, gap here around this situation. So everything addressing this topic, being open, be, being, being honest, it's like a, like a change program in a company, right? Uh, everything around this really helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, in which areas do you think it's more severe, this uh, gap problem? Is it more on uh, uh, pension, as you said? Yeah, if I would have to choose, I would pick, fr frankly spoken, everything around um, climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, we see each year situations, as we heard last year in uh, Thessalia, also in my country, in the Alps, for instance. And second, I think it would be around pension plus health, because demographic situation in whole Europe, not only in Greece, is not in our favor. And is Europe in a worse situation than the US? I would say it's quite similar. Much similar? Yep. Okay, noted. Thank you. Uh, I turn the discussion to Governor Yanis Tournaras. What are the implications of the protection gaps in the economy? Many. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, uh, if you take into account the most serious catastrophes in Greece, happened in uh, 1999, the earthquake, four billion cost. If you take into account uh, the wildfires in 2007, uh, cost 1.7 to 2 billion. If you take into account the serious drought in 1990, uh, 1 billion. Uh, all these have been mostly covered by, by the state, all, all these damages. Actually, um, there's a study which shows that from 1980 up to 2018, only 2% 2 of losses have been covered by, by private insurance. This is another measure of the insurance gap. But I want to, to, to say something more controversial. Okay, uh, the insurance gap is what uh, Alexandros and Andreas said. It's about, uh, let's say, 5.7% of GDP if you, if you co compare Greece with uh, the rest of Europe. So it's a kind of lack of convergence. It's, uh, okay, we try to converge. If we try to converge to the European average, so we need about 5% of, of GDP more private insurance. Uh, but I would say even more. Um, 
in, in Greece, we have another gap, is the current account gap. There is usually, in Greece, we have a current account deficit. Have you thought that it's the micro, uh, the micro incentives that lead the Greek people not to save enough? Because, as you know, the current account deficit, another reading, is not the difference between imports and exports, it's the difference between savings and investment. So we save too little. And why do we save too little? Uh, privately, because the state comes and covers almost everything. Everything is pay as you go. The pension system, the health system, um, the catastrophe system. So we have a pay as you go system uh, in almost everything. It's kind of pat paternalism, let's say. It's a, um, paternalistic capitalism in Greece is, means that the, the state at the end of the day will come and uh, cover everything. So I think this is the, the, the root of the problem. It's at the end of the day, everybody believes and this is a self-fulfilling prophecy that the state will cover all the, uh, all the gaps. So we need to, um, raid, uh, to, to raise awareness, uh, you know, because this is not possible. This will, will not continue. Climatic change is coming. Uh, the European South is going to, to suffer much more than the European North. Uh, according, you know, where we are one of the first banks, in the central banks in the world, to have made a study about. The, the impact of the climatic change in the country. Uh, with moderate estimates, of course, we uh, are going to, ha to have a new study now uh, using a discount rate of 2%, which I think it is appropriate for such long-term problems. In the next 100 years, the cost is, is going to be, of course, this is not going to be linear, so what mm -hmm. I'm saying is an average, is going to be 1% of GDP every year. I have seen a similar study in Spain, is 0.8%. Very similar. If we take countervailing measures, um, it goes to 0.6%, but it remains serious. So from now on, we have to, to, to take it into account that uh, climatic change needs, Daniel, for instance, is one instance, uh, take to raise awareness that people need to insure themselves. Sure. So, so if I understand you correctly, it probably maybe something between three billion, three to five billion euros every year should be directed to uh, cover the cost of uh, droughts or any natural disaster that may come, right? Uh, it's, uh, well, it, this is not linear. Uh, Absolutely. This is yeah. going to be yeah. an average over, but you like over 1 100 years GDP. according to the studies uh, yeah. we, have, we have seen and we have made. Uh, yes, so that means that uh, if, if this is not covered by, by the private sector, it will be covered by, by the, the, state. The, the public sector. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that the private sector does not have a cost. It will have a cost later in terms of higher taxation. So it's an illusion to think that if we don't insure ourselves, then uh, we, no, it will come and perhaps with a higher price because it's going to be less efficient. I think. Thank you, Governor. Uh, President Sergio, what do you think are the key drivers of the protection gaps in Greece? The simple answer, and I think we sort of all covered it, um, uh, is that I'm trying to decide how blunt I want to be. Is, so I will be blunt, is that politicians, regardless if they're coming from the left or the right or the center, have been very hesitant to tell, tell the people the truth, which is that the state cannot cover everything. The governor said it before. Um, if you come, you know, it used to be that people say that, oh, Greeks are Zorba-like, and that's why they don't insure they are Mediterranean, etc. You know, that's not it. It's basically your local politician is there on day one telling you, don't worry, I'm here. I'm here for your pensions. Never mind the demographics. I'm here for your health. I'm here for the natural catastrophes. They haven't been talking about cyber risk yet, which is of, of an enormous size, the risk. I agree with Andreas here. So the point is, the point has come where politicians are in a very difficult position now to having to tell people that it's not going to continue like it used to. And, you, and here I am, as a politician, to help you make some fiscal space to give you some incentive to insure yourself and provide risk management to your family that's going to come privately, okay? There is an industry that is now um, um, trustworthy and all of this is settled. We had big problems in the past. So this is the big issue. 
as long as every time there's a natural catastrophe, a politician is on TV, regardless of, 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 of the color, saying that we're here, we're going to give you the money, which doesn't happen. Uh, uh, the governor alluded before to um, the catastrophe, the, the, the earthquake of 99. You said four billion, I think, were the losses. Um, the industry paid 100 million, okay, of the four billion, but I don't think the state, the losses were four billion. I'm not sure the state actually paid four billion to, to people to rebuild their houses. I, I don't know. You know, so the point is, it's a political problem. It's, it's, a, it's a changing culture. Politicians have to come out after the next catastrophe and say, look, I give you so much so that you're not on the street, but I also give you some incentive, some guidance, some training to go insure yourself. And there's how you do it. That's it. And I guess the answer here is, as with all reforms, it takes time. Yeah. And I guess people are still uh, in the process of realizing. We don't have the gap. much time. That's the problem. <laughs> I point taken, uh, President Brandstetter. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the big question here is, what can be done? What needs to be done to narrow those protection gaps, not only here in Greece but also in Europe? Well, adding to what we heard from Governor and from from Alexandros, I think again, if I take the experience of my company, where I'm working for a CEO, we are acting in 18 countries of Europe. If you want to get through, you try to repeat constantly a message. And I will take your last sentences and constantly keep on repeating the message and saying, if governments, and by the way, this is a European topic, tell the people that we are there for you and we protect you, we can protect you, whatever it takes, if they keep on saying this is just not true. So we have to start at your root, educating the people. I, I thought listening to you like, how do we behave in private life? Like, I got three kids, okay? I got a son, he's 30, I got a daughter, 28, and I got a young boy, young, young man, 20. And I tried to raise them like being one day self-independent, going on their own, right? And I told my daughter especially, having in mind what I said before about this gender pension gap between men and women, I said, look, do not depend on a man. Try to save some money as soon as you have some own money. And she said, well, Dad, I'm earning just not that much as a psychotherapist. And this is this, even if you start saving 10 euro, 10 euro per month, it's a start. No one can tell me that as far as you have a job, you cannot save 10 euro. So, and we have offers such as these. So the private insurance companies have offers such as these. And then frankly spoken throughout whole Europe, I often hear the argument saying, well, People like Alexandros and me, who are, who are running insurance companies, just address this topic because our companies want to earn money. I want to now name this white elephant in the room. And I always say, well, this is true because most of insurance companies throughout Europe, independent of their shareholder structures, are not NGO. So we have also stakeholder, we have to pay salary to our, to our people, we have to pay our services to our clients, and we have shareholder who want to have a fair proper dividend. This is true. But it does not hinder us entering into, for instance, public-private partnership topics on, for instance, nut cut, as we see it in Belgium, as we see it in Switzerland. So there are countries, others as Greece, where it works. So why it shouldn't work here? As you just say, I may confirm what you said, Alexandros, there is no, no reason saying that it's not possible. It's just a kind of political will, a will, a strong will. Mr. Sergio, you, uh, you described the problem, of course. We listened to your uh, take on the issue. Uh, what solutions do you think would work, focusing on Greece? So I'm going to come back. Um, to lifting counter incentives, there are some taxes. We are in discussions with the Minister of Finance, the Ministry of Finance, to see how much money the state is getting from some of these taxes, 15% tax on your health insurance premium, 15% tax to insure your house. How much is the state getting versus what they are losing by having all this exposure, all this protection gap when there is an earthquake, a flood, and whatnot. So, lifting some of the taxes, I sympathize with my 
politician friends who are in government who are, you know, they have to manage a budget, okay, and it cannot be done overnight. But at the same time, there's, any, there's some homework that needs to be done without this uh, predisposition against private insurance. That's number one. Number two, I want to uh, focus on a couple of things. Natural catastrophes. Natural catastrophes, I have seen some uh, discussions in the Greek uh, public space whether the Greek insurance industry has the capacity to insure everything. Well, let's look at the starting point. We're at 15% of homes, 16% of homes insured. We have plenty of capacity to insure a lot, to insure the entire uh, uh, space and where there are difficult situations, because not everything is simple and that, Greece is not unique, there are, every country has that, then there is public-private sector cooperation. I take the chance here to, uh, the opportunity to uh, tell you that the association has been working with the international reinsurance community, and we will be presenting very soon to the government specific technical solutions in cases where you have huge natural catastrophes, where there is public power, uh, private cooperation, so the state is either a reinsurer in layer one, two, three, it, it's beyond this discussion. So there are solutions, and the point I want to leave you with is, we are not unique. I mean, we'll be the last developed country to do these things, not the first. So um, this is the answer. So we're not reinventing the wheel, I guess. No, we okay. absolutely not. Uh, Governor, uh, just to close this uh, discussion, uh, closing the protection gap would mean an upgraded role for the insurance industry. And as the supervisor of the Greek insurance market, do you believe that the sector has the capacity to undertake a significantly larger amount of risk? Yes, definitely. The insurance sector in Greece now has nothing to do with the uh, insurance sector 15 years ago. It's a strong sector with uh, capital more than required, about 3.8 billion compared to two, which is the minimum from, from solvency, experienced companies, both foreign um, subsidiaries of foreign companies, very strong Greek companies with capital adequacy, with a lot of savings. So I think they are in a perfect position to cooperate with the state for public-private partnerships. I, I fully agree. I mean, in life, corner solutions are never optimal. So it's not either public or private. Mm -hmm. It should be a combination of the two. Of course, the, the, the right mix has to be, to be found in practice. Second, public awareness is extremely important. You, you, have, you have both alluded to that. Uh, we are talking to the Ministry of Finance, um, the Deputy Governor, Christina Augustandino, Yanis Tsikripis, Mr. Konstantas, the Supervisor, uh, they, they talk to, an, to another team in the Ministry of Finance of how to cover the insurance gap, how to raise uh, public awareness. So the Ministry, so the government is listening. Is listening. So it's up to us uh, to find what is the optimal combination sure. of the two. But let me finish by taking the big picture. Insurance is very serious for the years to come because of climatic change, because of cyber risk. So uh, it's uh, climatic change. Insurance means that everybody should insure, the state, the private sector, in terms of new investment for, for green energy, uh, um, for uh, networks, for batteries. So this, this is uh, some kind of insurance. I mean, this kind of investment is insurance. So you, you have to think in terms of insurance and in terms of buffers required. Society will need buffers because what is coming, uh, it's very uncertain. So we need, and, and insurance is a buffer. So better, it's better to, plan, to start planning now, uh, the state and the private sector together, rather than having surprises. And surprises means um, suboptimal uh, solutions. If you allow me, uh, Governor, uh, First of all, I love the idea of buffers. Insurance is a buffer. But the other thing, insurance, let's not forget, it leads to this virtuous cycle where you get more insurance, you get more long-term investments, hopefully green investments that then get recycled into the economy and, funnel and fuel growth. So there are many benefits. 
but even simpler things like um, the um, the insulation of our houses mm -hmm. for the cold or, or, or the heat. This is some kind of insurance. This is green, this is green transition, this Absolutely. adaptation. This is also. So uh, we have to, to think in, in bigger terms rather than the micro, but also the macro. Have, have the macro picture in mind as well. All right, gentlemen, thank you for food for thought. Many thanks to, uh, Mr. to the president, Mr. Esayoryu, to the governor of the Bank of Greece, uh, Mr. Sturnaras, and to the president of Insurance Europe, Mr. Andreas Brandstetter. Thank you very much all for listening and for participating. There's a cocktail upstairs. Thank you all for your participation. Downstairs, I'm sorry, downstairs. <laughs>